know the importance of great goaltending. So important this time of the year. The postseason, so much scrutiny and pressure. Potential goalie trade candidates and their numbers this year. We're going to hit on some of these guys. They're called legal pads because lawyers use them. Lots uses more legal pads than any non-lawyer in the history of our society. I love you, but my goodness, it's like he's got diaries on top of diaries. I have to come to you first because no one has more notes than you, so you got to have the right answers. James Reimer, goalie on the move, what do you think? All right, well, here's what's on my legal pads first off. Just for the <laughs> that may not be true. James Reimer. <laughs> I did see a funny clip with that, but I digress. Yes. James Reimer. Okay. Now, obviously, he entered the year probably as the number two goalie, but the way Nedeljkovic has played, let's be honest, uh, his save percentage, as you just saw, saw on that board, is quite lower than Mrazek, who just got back, and Nedeljkovic. I would say he's solidly number three, but you'll never get Roddy Brindamore to admit that. And why would he? Because he doesn't have to. Now, James Reimer is a guy that I know the Carolina Hurricanes value significantly, so they're not looking to give him away. First off, they already paid the bulk of the money, Johnny. They had that big signing bonus that was due. His salary's not that much. That's why people are talking about him. He would provide depth for somebody. I don't see him moving at the end of the day. I think the Hurricanes are going to hold on to him. Someone would have to pay. Someone would have to overpay to get him, Johnny, for me. Well, we know Carolina's about asset management, and that means making tough decisions. And I, I agree with you. He does have value in the locker room. He can play games. But if he's a clear number three and the other two guys are healthy um, and someone's going to give you something that could turn into something for a guy that very likely wouldn't dress in the playoffs if everyone stayed healthy, um, th then I would be inclined to take a look at it. Uh, I, he brings experience. He's been around. He's been in big markets and big situations, certainly playing in Toronto. And he's also a, a very good guy. So to try to integrate a goaltender into a new dress room late in the year would not be a problem with James Romer. He would be supportive of the, whoever the starter is of the team that he goes to. So those are all reasons to make the trade. You're right. No, no need to make it happen. But if Carolina wants to, aggress wants to be aggressive, move some money out, get an asset back, and maybe set up something else, he'd be a guy that I would take a look at. What's that asset, Johnny? That's a good story, and I like it. It was very convincing. But what is that return? That's where it breaks down for me a little bit. I just don't think you'll get a big enough return to say, I got to give away my insurance policy for what are you thinking? My, my asset's probably a late third rounder. Yeah. I'm that, thinking that, a good team like attention. Colorado. That would get my attention. Right. Colorado needs, Colorado needs to do this for sure. Like they're, they're the one team that 100% needs to get somebody whether it's one of these guys we're talking about or somebody else. They need somebody. Now, they'll probably drive their best deal they can. Joe Sackick will do that. But, you know, a third rounder, which would be about the 90th pick in the draft because they're going to win the best teams in the regular season. Something along those lines maybe would be required to get one of these better UFA goaltenders. So if I'm Carolina and I get offered a third rounder for James Reimer, I'm like you. I would, I would probably have to think about that. All right. That's about the cut line for me. If you're talking a fourth or a fifth mm -hmm. or a sixth, I'd be like, no, nah, it's okay. I'll just keep my insurance. Right. You keep your draft pick. To Johnny's point, none of us will ever forget the look on Nathan McKinnon's face when Kibby Ranta scored the goal that eliminated the Avs, a team that had so much potent offensive weaponry, and they were done. How about Jonathan Bernier? Johnny, what do you think about him on the move? Well, I mean, I think... It's if, if he can, you know, he just got back from missing a few games, but you can throw the win loss record and almost the goals against out of the window because it's Detroit. But his save percentage is pretty good. His high danger save percentage is pretty good, kind of in the, the 20 to 25 area in the NHL. So he's not an upper echelon starter, but he's better than most backups. And again, a guy who's been around, he's got some experience. He's a smaller guy that, you know, has to play out and play big, but um, you could do a lot worse than a guy with his track record. Uh, he probably would not cost maybe as much as some of the other guys, an Antti Ranta or a Linus Olmark, so he may be a little bit cheaper uh, as far as the asset to acquire him. But uh, if you're Detroit, of course, you're looking to trade every potential UFA. I, I like Bernier's game this year. He's been pretty good for Detroit. I agree with you, Johnny, and I do think Detroit absolutely wants to move him. I do think it would be inexpensive. There's no reason for Detroit to keep him. Now, a team like Colorado, he's already been there, done that. That doesn't mean they wouldn't have him back. It does mean they certainly would know him and his character. 
and only Joe Sackick knows whether or not that would be something he'd want to go back to. But he definitely would fill the role as an insurance policy for the Colorado Avalanche. Johnny, last mm -hmm. word. Ranta, Olmark, any other goalies? The field on the move. What do you think? Well, I think Olmark, they got to make a decision whether he's going to be the franchise guy. Ranta, you know, Aiden Hill, Kemper, they got too many goalies there. Two things to consider real quick, though. Brian Elliott, do they want to bring him back as a mentor to Carter Hart? If so, then maybe he doesn't move. And David Riddick, he can play, trade it to Toronto and not have to deal with a quarantine because he's up in Canada. That quarantine issue is still out there, so uh, he's a pending UFA. He's obviously not going to be making three million bucks as a backup in Calgary to Markstrom over the next few years. Toronto needs some insurance. They're going to go get some insurance. Maybe there's a, a border issue that makes his case stronger for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I hadn't thought of that, Lots. That's an advantage. That's an excellent point. That's why we employ Johnny. Because.